In science and engineering, the term instrumentation refers to the equipment that is used to measure physical phenomenon. In this class, we're going to begin our discussion of instrumentation by talking about what instrumentation is and how we can quantify uncertainties in measurements that are associated with different types of instrumentation. This brief presentation is going to give you an overview of some of the terms that are associated with instrumentation and some of the motivation behind what, what we're going to talk about in this upcoming module. In instrumentation, the term transducer refers to any device that converts one form of energy into another form of energy. Of course, energy can take on a variety of different forms, including electrical, mechanical, electromagnetic, and so forth. A thermometer is a good example of a transducer that converts thermal energy into mechanical energy. Essentially, when we place our thermometer in a different temperature, the um, thermal energy is going to be transferred into the bulb of the thermometer, which in turn is going to change the potential energy or the height of the liquid um, that is in that bulb thermometer. So therefore, a thermometer is a transducer because it transforms thermal energy into mechanical energy. In a similar manner, we can think of a light bulb as being a transducer as well. A light bulb takes electrical energy in and as a result of this electrical energy, it produces heat and light in the form of thermal energy. A sensor is a special type of transducer that's going to convert one form of energy into a specific type of um, energy, which is electrical energy. This electrical energy th then can be exploited using circuits uh, and instrumentation concepts so that we can perform electronic measurements of these various parameters. A load cell is a good example of a sensor that converts an input of mechanical energy or force and converts that into an electrical output. Many of you have experience using a load cell in your statics and dynamics class. Another sensor that you're probably familiar with is that of a microphone. A microphone is going to take acoustic energy and the mechanical energy associated with that acoustic energy and convert that into an electrical signal. And that electrical signal is often recorded and preserved so that you can listen to your music at a later time. A fundamental property in instrumentation is to realize that no measurement can be perfect. For every measurement that we make, we're going to have errors or uncertainties. And it's important to point out that when we say error, it doesn't mean that there's a mistake. All right? It just means that there is a difference between what we measure and what the true value of what we are measuring is. We can define error as being the difference between the measured value and the true value. Using this formula, we see that error can be either a positive value or a negative value depending upon what the measured value is relative to the true value. Now, you may be wondering how we get this true value. Well, the true value of what we're trying to measure, which is called the measure and, is based on what's called a standard. A standard is something that we know to a high degree of precision um, has a particular value. So for a good example that you will learn in thermal, thermal fluids is that ice water um, that's mixed together well at standard temperature and pressure has a known temperature of zero degrees Celsius. So if I want to determine the error associated with a measurement with a transducer or a sensor um, that measures temperature, I can place that device into a, an ice water bath and know that it should have a true value of zero degrees Celsius. If my transducer does not read zero degrees Celsius, then I have some type of measurement error. And there are two types of errors that can occur in combination with each other. The first type of error is what's called a systematic error. This error occurs all the time with the same value. So for instance, if I take my temperature measuring device and place it in my ice water bath, and every time I do that, it reads two degrees Celsius, I know that I have a systematic error of 2 degrees Celsius. 
A random error, on the other hand, is going to differ from observation to observation. So if I place my temperature measuring device again into my ice water bath and I read negative 2 degrees Celsius, 1 degree Celsius, negative 1 degree Celsius, 0 degrees Celsius, 3 degrees Celsius, from observation to observation I have differences and therefore that is a random error in our measurement. The systematic and random errors lead us to the instrumentation terms of accuracy and precision. In common vernacular, accuracy and precision are often used to um, mean the same thing. But in instrumentation, they have distinct meanings associated with them. And a good way to look at this is if we look at shooting arrows at a target. Accuracy tells us how close we are to the true value, so the center of the target here is going to be the true, measurement, true value that our measurement should have. And the precision term tells us about the scatter around that measured value. All right, so if we look at this first target right here, we see that the um, arrows have landed close to the bullseye, and they're grouped very closely together. So in this case, we have high accuracy because they're close to the desired value, close to the bullseye, and there's a very tight grouping of those, um, of, of those arrow shots. The second bullseye provides us with an example of low accuracy with high precision. So in this case, because all of our shots are grouped close together, we have high precision, but the mean or the average of where those, all of those uh, arrows are located is not close to the bullseye, which is the desired value. Therefore, our accuracy is low. In the third example right here, we see that the grouping of the, where the arrows landed is not very tight. So we have a lot of scatter in the system, so therefore we have low precision. However, if we look at the average location of where these um, shots landed, we see that the average is going to fall close to the target value or the bullseye. So that means that although we have low precision, we have high accuracy. And finally, the fourth example shows us a representation of a case where we have a lot of scatter in the arrow landings and we don't, do not have an average that falls near the bullseye or the desired value. So in this case, we have an example of low accuracy and low precision. From this discussion, we see that systematic errors represent the inaccuracy of the system. That is, how far away from the true value um, that it is. And this is consistent because it occurs every time. Similarly, imprecision tells us about the random error or the scatter um, that we can expect in the data. And it varies between observations. The big takeaway from this is that it is impossible to make a perfect measurement. Because of this, there will always be some uncertainty in the resulting measurement or in the process. And it's important to note that this process can also include the design process. This uncertainty affects the quality of our measurement or of our process. And as you have learned in your management classes, there's always some balance that needs to be achieved between the speed of something, the cost of something, and the quality with which that is achieved. This is why it's important for us as engineers to be able to quantify uncertainties in processes. By being able to properly quantify the uncertainty or quality of our measurements or process, we can then be able to make more informed decisions about how uh, quality can be affected by either uh, changing uh, the speed at which the process occurs or how much that process is going to cost. In the upcoming module, we are going to learn how to use statistics to quantify these uncertainties and how these uncertainties can propagate throughout a system.